So we've had the Razer Blade 16 for a while now, and wow, what an amazing machine. Really enjoyed my time with it. But as with all Razer Blades from years gone past, Razer don't give you much configuration option when you buy the laptop. Now this year, if you buy the cheaper range, you're gonna get 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte. And as you move up through the ranges, it can go up to 32 gigabyte and two terabyte. Now with my 480 model, I got 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now as great as that is, when you first open up your laptop, put a few games and some apps on here and you soon fill that one terabyte. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to max out your Razer Blade 16 with 64 gigabytes of RAM and fast four terabytes of M.2 SSD storage. And the good news is the Razer Blade 16 is incredibly easy to work with. Obviously, you're gonna need your SSDs and your RAM. I'm gonna put a link to the components I'm using down in the descriptions below in case you wanna use the same. And you will need a decent toolkit, especially on an expensive laptop like this. It uses T5 screws, so do not cheap out, get a decent screwdriver. And I'm gonna be using the iFixit Electronic Essentials Toolkit. This is a great quality toolkit that's not too expensive, and it's everything I need for my day-to-day -day electronic upgrades. Now we'll again put a link to this toolkit in the description below and our video showing you everything that's included in this little toolkit. So first things first, shut down your laptop. Please make sure it's not in sleep, shut it down. Then we're gonna unplug it, flip it over. We're gonna use a T5 screwdriver to remove the eight torque screws. Once all the screws are removed, we're gonna lift the base plate off. Now do not rip it straight up. There are some retaining clips underneath. So lift the front of the panel and just wiggle it slightly towards you before lifting it away. There's just a few clips around the vents that hold it firmly in place. And once we're inside the laptop, the first thing you wanna do is disconnect the battery so you don't do any damage to the inside of this laptop. It's quite straightforward, but there's a sticker you're gonna to have to remove and then actually just pry the little tab away. And then I'm gonna start by upgrading the RAM first. This is an incredibly easy job. Now my unit came with two 16 gigabyte, 5,600 megahertz DDR5 RAM chips. I'm gonna be putting in two 32 gigabyte, 4,800 megahertz RAM chips. Now the RAM is slower, but I don't think it's gonna make a great deal of difference, and we will look at some benchmarks at the end, but I need the extra capacity of 64 gigabytes of RAM for this laptop. And the RAM is easily removed, you just pull the two retaining clips either side of the RAM chip, and the RAM will pop up, and then you just pull it straight out. You take your replacement chip, slide the RAM chip in at 45 degrees until it's seated, and then you push the RAM chip down until the arm locking clips snap into place, holding that RAM firmly. Now between the two RAM chips, one's always inverted, so just make sure you copy the one that you've pulled out before you replace the new one in. You can't go wrong, there's a tab that actually lines up with the tab in the RAM, so it will not fit the wrong way. Next I'm gonna be installing the blisteringly fast Samsung 990 Pro SSD. Now I'm going to be installing this into the second M.2 slot on this Blade 16, because I'm gonna clone the original drive to this new Samsung drive. Now that will mean opening and closing this laptop twice to perform this procedure, but it's very quick. And if you don't wanna do it that way, you could also buy the Sabrent USB-C to M.2 PCIe SSD adapter caddy. And by that way, you could plug it externally into this laptop and clone it outside and therefore open it only once. But personally, it's faster cloning it internally between the two drives, because obviously they're gonna communicate faster. So I don't mind opening it twice to speed up this process. So now that the machine's back up and into Windows, I'm gonna install Samsung's data migration software. Now this is free if you've bought a Samsung drive. I will link it in the description down below. And if you didn't buy or you've already got your own SSD, it's a different brand, you're gonna need a different piece of cloning software. I will put a link to a couple of other versions that are either free or paid for in the description section down below. But I do love the fact with Samsung, they give you one for free and it works very effectively. It's also incredibly easy, although it doesn't give you a lot of options. You open the software, it'll automatically select the actual primary drive, and then you'll choose your destination drive, which will be in this case, the Samsung 990 Pro. You click start, it copies the entire drive from, from the original drive to your new Samsung, and at the end, it will shut the machine down ready for you to swap those SSDs back over. So we've got the machine powered off, I've taken the base plate off, and now what I'm gonna do is take both of these SSDs out of this system. I'm now gonna put my freshly cloned Samsung 990 Pro into the primary slot in place of that original one terabyte SSD. I'm gonna put the heatsink back on, and then I'm gonna put in my secondary drive, and in this case, I'm using a Samsung 980 Pro, but it's still a very quick drive, but it's not as fast as the 990. But as it's only be holding games, I don't care so much about the speed, so I'd rather save a few pounds. And once that second drive is screwed into place, we connect the battery connector back in, we screw the base plate back on, and we are up and running back into Windows. Now everything will be exactly the same as it was before with the original drive, except you've got two terabytes on an incredibly fast Samsung 990 Pro in this case. 
Now our second 980 Pro won't show yet because we've just put it in. The first thing we need to do is initialize it. So if we go to disk management, it will automatically pop up and ask you to initialize the disk. Make sure you do that. And once it's initialized, you right click on the drive in disk management and you format it. You give it a drive letter, you give it a name, whatever you want to call it. In my case, it'll be a games drive. You've now got a second two terabyte drive shown in your Windows Explorer. So now the drives are up and running in Windows. I'm gonna run Crystal Disk Mark and just show you how fast they are. Now we can see at the bottom here, we've got the 990 Pro SSD and we're scoring just over 7,000 read and just under 7,000 writes, which is an incredibly fast drive. Now the 980 Pro, which is obviously a little bit older than that 990 Pro, has still got some great read and write performance with 6,500 for read and 5,000 for write. These are still great scores and for a gaming drive, that's absolutely perfect for my needs. And I've saved a few pounds over that 990 Pro. And another thing I've loved about these Samsung drives is just how cool they run for NVMe drives. I was concerned, especially after running some of the Western Digitals, which do run very hot, running Crystal Disk Info whilst running the benchmarks on these drives, they were sitting in the 50 degrees centigrade range, which for an SSD, especially a fast running one, is very impressive. So overall, I'm really happy with my new four terabytes worth of SSD drive in this machine. The next thing I wanna look at is my new 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now straight away, looking in Task Manager, you can see that 64 gigabyte is showing and working fine, and it's running at its 4,800 megahertz rated speed. Now that is slower than the 5,600 megahertz RAM that this model shipped with. So I completed a few benchmarks just to see what the difference actually is. Now in a synthetic benchmark, ADA64, the 5,600 megahertz RAM does actually come out a fair bit ahead, scoring 80,000 on the read as opposed to 72,000 on the slower 64 gigabytes of RAM. Also, the latency is very slightly faster on the newer RAM. And that did concern me when I first started running these benchmarks, thinking mm, this is gonna make a noticeable difference. But then when I started running Cinebench, Geekbench, and Time Spy, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all of those came in slightly stronger on that 64 gigabyte of RAM kit, which is really surprising. Now I do plan to get a 64 gigabyte kit in 5,600 megahertz at some point, but it is very expensive at the moment, but I would like to test it to see if it gives me any benefit over the 4,800 megahertz. But from these initial results, I don't think it's going to. So if you've got the 4,800 megahertz RAM, or you see the 4,800 megahertz RAM cheaper than the 5,600, I think don't worry about it and keep that saving. Now obviously 64 gigabyte could well be overkill for a lot of people, especially if you're just using this machine for gaming. And if so, stick with the 32 gigabyte kit that's in this machine. For me personally, I plan to use this machine for heavy video editing, for development, and I run a lot of VMs. So for me, 64 gigabytes is an absolute must. So I'm pleased at how well it's worked in this machine. So there we go, you can see just how easy it is to max out the Razer Blade 16. It's been a great machine to work on, nice and easy to get into, and everything's easily accessible and it hasn't even cost me that much to upgrade this machine to the max. And as usual, if you've got any questions on this procedure or anything else to do with this Blade 16, pop it in the comments section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.